Hi, I'm Jennifer Walker, and this is my case study on insulin overdose. The insulin overdose case study is a prime example of multiple system failures. A large dose of insulin to correct hyperkalemia was accidentally administered to an unstable patient during surgery. The amount administered was 10 times higher than the recommended amount. The overdose administration was due to fatigue, packaging, and poor communication. Performing a root cause analysis allows the healthcare team to find the reason for the error and to identify corrective measures. In a root cause analysis, a multidisciplinary team asks three questions. What happened? Why did it happen? And how to prevent it from happening again? This paper will identify the cause of the insulin overdose and measures to prevent the medication error from occurring again. What went wrong? The Food and Drug Administration reports each year 1.3 million injuries and at least one death per day occur due to medication administration errors in the United States. There are multiple causes of medication administration errors. MAEs can be a result of packaging design, miscalculation of dosages, misinterpreted orders, or due to distracting environments. Getting to the root of the problem allows for system changes that aim to prevent the errors from occurring again. While any medication potentially can cause harm, a select group of drugs, high alert medication, HAMS, carries a higher risk of patient injury. Insulin is a ham. When an RN administers insulin, the dosage is verified by another RN. There are no double checks required when a doctor administers a medication. In this case study, it was a resident doctor that administered the overdose of insulin. Before the doctor administered the insulin, seven problems were quickly identified. The first cause identified is fatigue. The anesthesia resident had been working non-stop for almost 24 hours. An exhausted provider is more likely to make errors. The resident was exhausted in a stressful situation with a critical patient that continued to have more complications. The situation was an error waiting to happen. Another problem identified is the resident didn't feel comfortable asking the attending questions. The poor communication is related to fear and pride. The resident didn't want to ask questions into which it is assumed that a senior resident should know the answers. It is not uncommon for residents to fear being judged for asking obvious questions. Fostering a poor communication environment makes way for errors. The most significant problem identified is the insulin packaging. An insulin vial contains highly concentrated insulin, 100 units per cc, since it is packaged for subcutaneous use, which much larger doses are required, rather than intravenous administration. In an emergent situation, the type of packaging is essential. Without being trained on dilution requirements, a provider could easily make this error. Even with proper training, mistakes happen in a high-stress, critical moment. How can the issues be resolved? The Joint Commission requires a root cause analysis in the case of a sentinel event. Even though the patient did not have low blood sugars from the overdose of insulin, the administration of a thousand units is significant. A root cause analysis should be conducted to prevent the medication administration error from occurring again. Using a root cause analysis will help the investigation to identify contributing causes and solutions to the causes. Undertaking a root cause analysis can assist in identifying areas for change and developing recommendations with the aim of providing safe care. Who's involved? Reducing the risk of medication errors is a shared responsibility between patients, healthcare professionals, regulators, and the pharmaceutical industry. There are 
at least three stakeholders that can get involved to reduce the chance of this error from occurring again. The stakeholders are hospital administration, the pharmacy, and the doctors. Proposed solution. Developing an action plan identifying smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound actions that will be undertaken to address the root causes and contributory factors related to the incident. There are several smart measures to put in place that will reduce the chance of this error from occurring again. It is proposed that the pharmacy will reduce the chance of this error from occurring again by having pre-measured intravenous insulin syringes in the operating room. At this time, 10 units of insulin are the standard treatment for hyperkalemia. Pre-filled syringes are the way the pharmacy could contribute to the reduction of insulin errors. Verification with individual hams such as insulin is a safe idea for any administration. If the resident doctor would have communicated what he is about to give, two things would have occurred. The attending would have caught the error, and upon hearing the dosage out loud, the resident may have thought twice and found his own mistake. When a resident doctor is going to administer insulin, communicating the dosage with their attending should be required. Even with the amount of training that a doctor has undergone, mistakes can be made in high-stress situations. Requiring communication reduces the fear and pride factor, and attending should be required to check dosing before administration of insulin by any resident. The attending is responsible for the actions of the resident. Requiring communication helps promote a safe environment for questions. The requirement would eliminate the wrong dosage administration due to poor communication. The last system error identified was fatigue. The hospital administration could reduce the chances of this cause by eliminating the number of hours a resident is allowed to work consecutively. Residents' work hours are restricted to 80 hours per week in the United States. 80 hours a week is not safe, especially if the resident is on call for all of the 80 hours in a row. Most people require 7 to 8 hours of sleep in 24 hours. Being sleep deprived increases the risk of errors. The hospital administration should mandate an 8-hour rest period after 12 hours worked. Fatigue can be reduced during an extended shift with prescribed rest periods. The root cause analysis identified three causations and three solutions. Healthcare systems must identify possible obstacles to the solution recommendations before implementation. By addressing the obstacles beforehand, the solutions have a smoother transition into practice. One potential barrier identified is the resident rest requirement. If the resident is in surgery at the 12 hour mark, the resident will be allowed to finish that surgery. Another possible barrier identified is requiring a dosing check for insulin administration by a resident. Some residents may feel they have enough experience not to require the inspection, but residents are still learning. By mandating the attending to do the checking, it puts the responsibility of learning back on the attending. The door is open for effective communication between the team. Promoting a safety culture in every healthcare environment is essential to patient outcomes. Utilizing a quality improvement systems approach, like a root cause analysis, ensures the evidence-based practice is used and patient outcomes are maximized. A root cause analysis is a system tool that identifies problems and solutions. Typically, errors are found to be a system problem, not an individual problem. The goal of a root cause analysis is to prevent future harm by eliminating all errors and issues that underlie adverse events. The overdose of insulin could have easily been prevented with safety guards in place. With the recommended solutions, the institution where the error occurred would have less chance of the medication administration error from happening again.